as I start this video, I just want to let you know that if you've watched my previous video in this particular series, there are a number of things that have changed and you don't have to lose that knowledge because some things will be reusable. However, when I was making this video series, that was over a year ago. So, so many things have since changed, like the way WordPress is built and the way the editor is, it has advanced in this period of one year. In that there are things that we would actually put in our settings that don't need to be. They can actually just be part of the core development using the tooling and the components that have been made available inside WordPress itself in the core. So you will see here in this previous video that I showed you how to use JSX, which is basically using HTML in JavaScript. And we saw how to use inspector controls, block panels, text area controls, and so on. However, the development of Gutenberg blocks natively has since changed because different components have actually been exposed so that you can use them. Previously, we had to have very good knowledge of React as a framework to be able to make our own components. But now WordPress has changed so much in that when I go to my editor, I'm able to select just a small piece of my content, adjust it, make different changes to it. And of course, when I go to the settings panel, I am able to do things like text color changes, make background changes to that effect, as well as change the color of the links, all the way to typography and all these other changes. Now, if we want to keep our editing experience as close as possible to what we have in the block editor, then we have to build things the new way. That means we're going to use things like the block.json file, which we're going to see. We're going to have a new way that tools are being used and if this is the journey you want to walk with me, then let's jump into the code. And the first thing that we should do is check that Node is installed, and we should also check that npm is also installed. I'm going to use npx as a command, and I'll type at WordPress slash, and I'm going to go for the create block, and then hit enter. I'll get this question whether I want to install this. I'm going to type y to proceed, hit enter. And this tool will allow us to compile our React and different modern JavaScript syntax, SCSS and SAS down into JavaScript and CSS that the browser can actually understand. Now, this has been installed and it's asking me, do I want to actually customize my WordPress plugin block? And I would say yes. So you can choose whether you want to use a static block or you want to use a dynamic. Now in my case, I can choose a static or I can choose a dynamic. So I'm going to use a dynamic for now. And the slug that I want to use is travel it block native. And I need to use a namespace. So I'm going to just use TechiPress, which is my name. I'll tra use travel it block for the name of my block. And I'll say a block natively created to use Gutenberg for WordPress. And then the dash icon, I can use anything. Right now I can leave it as a smiley and change it in the future. Or I can actually go into dash icons. I'll go here to my browser and I just need to go to the developer.wordpress.org slash resource slash dash icon. And since we're going to do travel, we can use something that's more related to nature. For example, I want to use this palm tree. So I'll just get palm tree here, go back here, I'll type palm tree. In relation to text, media, widgets, and so on, I'll leave it in the design. And then I'll say, do I want to customize my WordPress plugin? I'll say, yes, I want this to be outside of my WordPress repo. So I'll add my GitHub repo that I'm going to use. So slash YTT, take a press, slash travel, it block dash native. So the current version, I'll leave it as 0.01. The contributors are myself. I'll leave the license as that. And then I'll just say, let's have that in languages. I'll copy my GitHub link and pass that as the URI for the plugin. And then the tool will actually start creating our files that we need inside 
the specific part. So I'm not going to go through explaining all these other files because we did that in the very first video of the series. So you can actually go back and watch that. But basically this is our file that has all the comments to allow us to initialize our plugin. What I mean, when I go back into my plugin section, you'll see that we have the travel it block right here. And I am able to actually activate by clicking this button. But let's allow our installation to complete. And you will see that in here we have a new folder called SRC, which has all our different files that we are going to use while we are compiling our block information, that is the JavaScript and the SCSS. And in here we're going to see that we have a new file that we didn't have before. And this file is known as the block.json file. Now this file is the one that keeps all the different information that we have about our block. And as we add more features to our block, you'll see that there are more options than what we actually just have here. And that will allow us to explore and build more features into our block, making our edit experience as native and as close as to what we have in the core of WordPress. Because we chose to have our block as dynamic in nature, we actually have another file called the render.php. And if we go back to our block.json, you'll see that this is added here. And you're going to see that this is the file that will be used to render. And it actually has some PHP going inside here. So we can do manipulations of different types in our PHP. And that will actually get thrown on the front end. And now that the script has finished installing all the files that we need, you'll see that we have a node modules files here, which houses all the dependencies that we use for compiling our block. And you'll see that we also have a build folder here that has everything being exported so that it can be used on the front end or in our editor. So let's go back. I'm going to activate this block and you'll see we don't have any errors. And if I go to my pages, I'm going to come to the sample page, click here and I'm going to add a new block, which is the travel it block. Click on this and you'll see that we have this showing up here. If I click update, we should be able to go and view this on the front end and we have a block right here. So if I'm to inspect this block, you'll see that it has a paragraph, it has all the necessary things like the IDs, the classes and so on. And it's basically just HTML being thrown out. And all of this is coming in from the JavaScript that we've written. And if I go on the front end, you're going to see that we just have a paragraph tag and the inner texts that were thrown in in the render file. So you're going to see that this is just basically a reflection of what we have in the render file. Now, some of the use cases of having this block.json is that we can actually come here and say, we don't want to support the class name and we want to say, let that be false. So if I save this, let's run this in our integrated terminal and I'm going to hit NPM start and that will allow us to recompile our block. Now this will allow our block to be recompiled and I'm going to come back here. I'll hit reload in our editor and I'll remove this. I'm going to re-add the block here and say, let's add the travel it block. We'll hit update and then we'll go to view our page here. And on reload, you're going to see that if I inspect this very item, we don't have a class name attached to this. And that is simply because we've added a class name false right in here. Now this particular property stops the editor from creating a dynamic class so that we can use the HTML classes that we have written in our PHP and HTML. However, this is not the only property that we can affect. In this particular case, I'm going to use the align tool to make sure that our block can center left align or even right align. And I'll also add a property so that we can see whether this allows itself to align wide inside the editor. So I'll come back here to our editor. I'm going to click reload here. And when I click on this, you will see that we now have the option of actually centering this or sending it to the right, or we can actually say, let it go full width. So it blows all the way through our editor. And we're not doing much, we're just adding different small changes into our block.json file. And it's giving us all the components that are available in core, and we're adding them into our block. 
with this we can now start to manipulate our block and make it much much better i don't want to make this a long video i just wanted to show you the possibilities that are here but in the next video we're going to start adding different components in here to make sure that our editor is actually editable and we have the different settings that we can click on and allow our block to look as we want it to do so Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope you like the video. Please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and watch out for the next videos.